So, you've had a few boats. You've enjoyed the powerboat lifestyle, get into the weekends and the overnights. You then started getting into sailing, maybe a little bit of yacht racing. Twilights have kind of become your thing and you're half decent. Well, now you're ready for an adventure. Time to sail north or south for that matter. And you fancy bringing your mates or your family along. But you're that guy or girl who wants to enjoy their sailing. You want to be out there doing it for real. You want to see what you're doing and enjoy the ride. Well, if that's you, we might just have the boat for you today. My name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life, and today we are on the XS12, a sporty catamaran, a catamaran which allows you to enjoy the ride. Built by the Benito Group and imported by Flagstaff Marine. We're out here today with Mika, and we're up in the beautiful Queensland office at Runaway Bay, taking this beauty for a ride. So come with us, we're gonna get the drone in the air, we're gonna do a walkthrough, show you all about this wonderful piece of kit and how it can take you on your next adventure. Nothing out there could ever stop me From chasing after the way you la 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 love me Keeping me up to cups of coffee Baby, you make me feel so la 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 lovely I keep on running, no, I shouldn't want it So I'm here at the port aft helm and I'll just start the walkthrough from here. So first thing I'll do, because we are under sail, is I'll press auto and I'll let Mika take over helming of the boat because uh, we're about to go through the Gold Coast Seaway just up ahead. In terms of the ergonomics and what we have around me here, um, the first and most obvious thing is these fold down seats. Um, these will uh, retract and get out of the way and they have their own custom little covers so this whole transom is open and accessible for when you're boarding the tender or coming into the dock. But the helm position itself is comfortable. This is great. Um, standing, transitioning to standing is, is very, very easy. You can lean on it, no problems. It's quite a solid um, base just here. And then you've got handholds here. This kind of works like a handhold as well. And then if you want to move your body around, doing this and this is, is really not a problem. Moving forward, you've got, once again, grab holds, some grab holds up here and grab holds here. So it's, it's at no time are you searching for something to hold on to. And you know, it, we're proving it right now, we are out in the ocean. Um, I can see this lo looks like an emergency rudder stock just on, uh, on top of me for emergency tiller. And this is a little gear storage area just here. I'm not gonna open it as we are under sail, but on the transom, we've got some lifelines. We've got a four-step four swim ladder, which folds out. Large cleats on either side, or, or each hull, I should say. And a hot and cold shower on the port side. Um, coming across into the middle section, uh, we've just got a holder here for a life buoy. This has got the optional uh, dinghy davit system on it here, so that's gonna be good for a sizable inflatable rib and motor will fit just there and it's got all the systems for hauling it up as you make your way through the cockpit now one of the notable um, features of the excess catamarans is this beautiful big shade that we have over the main cockpit area and by bringing the helm stations aft yes we have great sailing but we have even better entertaining uh, because you, you're not you're not filling this area up just here with a helm uh, and all the associated equipment. So it becomes a giant big social lunch and dinner table. And 
I could say this from experience. One of the best holidays you'll ever have is a catamaran holiday. Because just tell me, when in life do you get to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with your mates sitting down at a table in a beautiful, different surrounding each day? And that's something you can do on a catamaran. Um, it, you know, it's, it's good, it's quality time. You get up somewhere like the Whit Sundays, you don't even have mobile phone reception. So your kids aren't gonna be mucking around, you know, FaceTime and all that TikTok stuff. You're gonna be enjoying the environment and just experiencing what's around you. So that's just great. But back to the boat. Um, we have, do we have an opening locker? No opening locker under these seats. That's probably accommodation under there, but we do have a storage bin underneath there. This is the fixed teak table. Um, enough space for plenty of people here. I'd say one, two, three, I'd say six to seven people around this table. So you could have some director's chairs on that side and then one, two, three, four, maybe five people, depending how large they are. Um, this table here can option to drop down to turn into a big day bed, which could be nice. That's, um, that would be a really good spot, even to sleep overnight if you're up in the tropics. This aft seat, is great, um, good backrest, cushions on it. They're all removable. So you can either put covers over the cushions or remove them. Um, but once again, three or four people can sit down and enjoy the ride here. You can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You could get eight people across the back, maybe 10, depending on how large they are. So this, this is a cockpit for 15 plus people. It, it's epic. Um, we've got the Flexi Teak finish along the floor here. So it, it does give you a bit of extra grip with, with boat shoes on, but it also looks very nice. Um, and back to the roof. This roof is a fixed roof in the current state on this boat. And I'd imagine most Aussies are gonna go for the fixed roof, but there is an option to completely open it uh, with retractable, uh, a retractable shade. So it's like a sunroof type setup. And I think that's going to be super awesome for people who maybe want to do a lot more day boating and a little less cruising because that'd be great because it's just going to open this whole area up. You imagine in the twilight evenings, um, you know, popping that open, watching the stars and the moon rise, that would just be absolutely amazing. Making our way around. Um, hello, crew. You guys just keep the boat on track and don't let us run into these rocks. So thank you. Um, all the sailing gear. So all the operation is done from the starboard helm. We do have some halyards on the port side. Uh, these winches are electric. We can operate them with the buttons here. We've got a compass just here, and then the same instrument panel on starboard. The only thing that we don't have uh, uh, on port, which we do have on starboard, is the engine operation. So we've got our en two engines starting, stopping, and revs just there, and here's the throttle on starboard, super easy to reach. And we did walk it uh, in and out of the dock or maneuver it in and out of the dock and your visibility is fantastic. So come with me and let's have a look to, in the interior of the boat. So we've entered the broad water, it's a bit calmer in here and now's a good opportunity to talk to you about what's going on uh, inside the main part of the boat. First things first, you enter through a sliding door. So this one slides and locks closed. And then you have this serving window, which is also a sliding operation. So that opens you up into this open plan galley. And this is, this is a great setup. You know, it's, this keeps all the action centralized in the boat, gives you the option to move the party inside when the weather changes and keep everyone comfortable, but still enjoying the water. So what do we have here? The galley. It's all on the port side mostly. Um, this bench top is like a Corian stone type finish. Very, very nice. This is finished in gray. And then we have a deep stainless steel sink here, um, which is all, you know, you can just push everything into the sink. So it's no, no weirdness just there. We've got fiddles going all the way around uh, on both sides. And this bench carries across to the starboard side. Um, before I go around one by one, first things first, there's a fridge outside, so you don't even need to make your way in. As you do, there's an option for another fridge. This has got the standard drawers in this particular boat, so we have two deep drawers, but this could be an option for the third fridge. Coming around here, 
is your main fridge. So that's a quite a large fridge just there with a, it's an isotherm with a freezer set up as well. We have a two burner, sorry, three burner gas um, stove and oven just here. And then drawers, another bin set up. So all your cleaning gear can go in there. And then uh, this one is another one for pots and pans underneath the uh, stove just there. We've got extra space sitting up here and being that it is a catamaran, they don't rock around as much as mono holes. So you can do things like this and just put a basket with bits and pieces in here. But it's also a good uh, like phone and item charging area. You could put coffee machines and other utensils up here that need to be plugged in because you do have power points and you can run them off the genset just there. So making our way around, uh, we got the nav station just here. This is, it's a multi-use area. So I love seeing when boat designers put multiple uses into the one piece of furniture and that's exactly what the guys at XS have done here. So we've got a rounded off nav station so nobody's gonna bang themselves at sea and hurt themselves. Same with the table here. So currently it can function like this, a little lounging area and it's extension of the L-shaped setup that we have here. But you can also unbolt the seat just here, move that out. If you wanna do some proper navigation, it's all at hand here, your boat systems, you can have some more displays there if you wish, or you could just use it as a phone charging area. So that's there. But then you can also move this around to that side of the dining table and then you have people sitting there, there and on the starboard side. So you've got full U-shaped seating at the, at the dinner table. So that's great. Head height is fantastic as you'd expect on a boat like this. The interior finishes, we've got the white finish, uh, but you don't have to have that. You don't have to have that. You can option it with a timber finish and there's also multiple options with the upholstery as you work your way around too. This table, is, it is the dining table, but there's an option for a coffee table set up. So you don't have to have the dining for six, you can have a, a small fold away coffee table, coffee table. And then we got two large opening hatches just here, so that's, that lets plenty of breeze, I can feel that now as we're sailing along, plenty of breeze through, and we got a small opening hatch on the port side, which is just near the cooking setup. And these windows, all of them have blinds. So if you wanna have some privacy of an evening, um, they've all got blinds. You're not really gonna see in through the day, but you'll be able to see that on our drone picks. Um, as I work my way through, now's the time to possibly show you that all these seats, yes, they're comfortable. They're great, actually. They've got really good lower back support. You can sit like this and rest your arms on top of the cushion. This is definitely a lounge that I would come and have a sleep if I was off watch and you're sailing somewhere, you'd be really comfortable. And if you were needed, you can just pop your head up and get out to the helm. Um, and you can also look and see what's going on. So you're still part of the action, but all of them lift up and there's storage. So underneath all of these seats here as deep storage bins, the size um, you know, of, this, of the uh, seat structure itself, and they all uh, store items as you go. Um, yeah, anyway, I don't think I've missed anything. We do have some cupboards up on top of each galley bench, so that's more pantry storage. This boat's got a couple of optional fans. We don't really need them. We've got really good airflow today. And then you go down into either hull. So. Welcome to my boat office, or otherwise known as the port hull. Um, this is the owner's version, and this is awesome. Come down and let's have a look at this, because you, you really don't want to miss it. So in the owner's version, the port hull is dedicated to the owner's enjoyment and use. Um, I'm just gonna get out of the way so you can see, but you have this large bed, which is, it's not an island bed. You can get in and out of it on the starboard side, but not the port, but at least it gives you that, you know, a little bit of flexibility. And the bed's huge, you know, it, it's, it's really comfortable. The foam is thick. Um, this is something I would be comfortable sleeping uh, many nights on and I can see I have an opening hatch here so that's getting aft ventilation I've got a forward opening hatch a large one which is also an escape hatch there and I've got a side window just there with a very large hole window so I mean we are sailing right now and I can see the ocean and that's just beautiful but around you you've got 
quite a large bedside table with fiddles on either side and phone charging. So we've got 12 volt charging, 240. I've got reading lights, I've got optional fans, and then I'd have small lockers. This one's open, this one uh, opens and closes. And then as you exit the bed area, you just go down the one step. So once you move out of the sleeping area, you come into what I'm going to call the home office and working area, which is, which is great. So many people are doing that with their boats these days anyway. But you've got a, an area to sit down and put your shoes on. It's, it's actually quite enjoyable. I'm looking at the ocean passing between the two hulls right now as we sail along. But you do have this small working desk, so um, that's perfect for putting a laptop or small items underneath. You could even set up a computer here permanently on a boat like this if it was your own. Um, you've got power, you've got reading lights, you've got fans, you've got another opening hatch just there, and you have plenty of privacy because... There you go, now you are really secluded from the rest of the boat. Your guests, they're gonna be staying in the other cabin quite a way away from where we are right now. So nobody's gonna be hearing what's going on on either side, you know, if that's, a, if that's an issue. Um, but you have a little cupboard here and here. You have knick-knack storage here, here, and here, and here. So that's all, you know, reasonably deep. You could slot t-shirts and shorts and all that sort of stuff in there, beach towels. Um, access to the bilge is excellent. So all the way through, you can remove these hatches and, you know, all the way down. I wouldn't necessarily go storing stuff in there because I can see all the uh, working elements of the build system and the boat, but sure you could. You just go make sure you're careful where you put it. But that's all the way along. We've got this little movable puff thing, um, but that's, that's fine. You know, that works if you want to use this as a bit of an office. And then for your changing and um, getting dressed set up, this is more like you're getting dressed stationed just here because you do have your proper hanging lockers here and here, and then your storage shelves, which is great for all your clothes. So you could have your wet weather gear and all your sailing gear hanging on one side and your shore gear on the other side and do the same with this. And then as we come along on this side, it's really just access to systems. So we're looking at electronics and that sort of thing um, as we work our way through here and that's just a shallow storage. I'd assume there's probably access to some systems after that as well. We'll just have a quick look in the toilet. So we'll swing around. And once again, one of the best things about the owner's version is you do get quite a large toilet, you know, for a boat this length. Imagine if this was a mono hull, you couldn't come close to the amount of real estate that we've got right now but this is a really good shower. So it's just got a proper separate shower with this Perspex screen. I've got the window open right now, as you can see the water sailing past. I've got this similar stone finish um, that we have in the galley, uh, wrapping around the benches here, which looks, I, I really like this, it looks nice. But this one's got a design that it's gonna hold all your shampoos and then any water's gonna drain out into the shower basin just here. And then we've got the adjustable shower here. The height, it's huge. I can hardly even touch the roof. A couple of access panels on either side. We'll see what's in there. Okay, that looks like um, that looks like operation for the seacocks for the toilet and also your water pressure pump. Okay, so moving our way into the loo itself. As I said, you've got this nice stone bench top finish and that goes all the way around the vanity it's a deep vanity it's quite a deep vanity for a for a boat loo and you've got stone back plate as well looks which looks you know quite nice with the the stainless steel finish um tap just there but we've got storage 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 three of them just there we've got open shelves and this mirror seems to be fixed i'll just see no it's not oh wonderful more storage than you need, really. It's This is um, very, very well set up. A couple of downlights there and there, and a large forward-facing opening hatch, which is also an escape hatch. There is a privacy screen and a fire screen on that one. So this is the best ventilated toilet I've seen in a while on a boat. So separate shower, private loo, lots of fresh air. It's always gonna be smelling fresh, and it's private, so fantastic. 
So here we are in the starboard cabin, and the first thing worth noting is you don't have that big private door like you do on the port side. This is the guest cabin, so we have one guest sleeping cabin up, cabin up forward and a large cabin down aft with toilet and shower behind me. But come down and we'll just have a look at the forward one first. And so this is what on the other side of the boat would be the, the toilet and shower. This is now a sleeping area. Um, nice, comfortable, thick foam. I don't know which end you're supposed to sleep, but I'm just guessing it's this end. And yeah, that's great, that's comfy. I've got an opening hatch there, I've got another opening hatch there, beautiful big hull window with blinds, and I've got stripped down lighting uh, and reading lights, power for my phone, and some storage ledges on the port side of the cabin, and this leather pouch just here, plus another one there for knickknacks. So, you know, for, for kids or for an extra couple who are just coming to stay with you for the weekend, this is, this is great. Um, in terms of getting out of bed, it's like so, but underneath the bed you have these, or this large storage drawer, so that's just there. Um, you've got this one step here, and then you get, you get down into the main floor with more of these um, opening hatches, which is access to the bilge. But this, this would be the area you utilize to get change. So you are gonna be a little bit tight if you're a couple moving around, but you probably just come in to get change one at a time or something like that. Um, but on the starboard side, you have a big, large hanging locker with some more um, rail, rails on the door, which is gonna be good for drying towels and that sort of thing. And then on the port side of this cabin, we've got an opening uh, locker, uh, which is just here with a couple of shelves in it. Um, so, uh, you know, a little bit, it's, it's enough to, to get you going. You can get underneath the bed, so I would probably take my, you know, if you've got airline carry-on bags or if you've got sailing bags, I'd probably unpack them, distribute your gear throughout the boat, and then put the bag underneath the bed and you're ready to go for your sailing trip. So this is the cabin you give to your most important friends because this is the guest VIP. Um, very spacious, spacious, almost a mirror uh, image in terms of the bed's size, but obviously the cabin is a little bit different. We do have this large hull window with blinds. That's got the opening hatch. We still have the escape hatch, which is a ginormous forward-facing ventilation setup as well. Plus we have a, an opening hatch here. So all of these can be blocked off for light and privacy, but it's a very well ventilated and, and comfortable cabin. Got a little fan here. There is storage underneath the bed. Still got this big table, uh, a side table, which I'm sitting on. It's got some fiddles either side so things won't fall out. I got charging 12 volt and 240 just there. I've got a little ledge here. And obviously um, the easiest uh, way of getting out of the bed is on the port side because the person on the starboard side is gonna have to just shuffle out a little bit. So the husband probably has to take that side. Um, I do have a, uh, one, another one of these leather storage pouches just there, so that's good. And then when you're out of bed, you step down like this and then if you were needing some privacy to get change, you've got this much area here to stand and do your thing. So yeah, it's a little bit tight, um, but it's fine because you can also use the loo. And you'd, as I said, same as the other cabin, you'd use it one at a time. It's not supposed to be fantastic compared to the owner's cabin because then it wouldn't be an owner's cabin. Come with me and we'll check out the loo. So what I like about this uh, head and shower arrangement is they haven't skimped on the toilet. Okay, you don't have your own private hull like the other side, but you've got a proper separate shower with closing door, that latch is shut just there. I've got a, a, you know, a nice opening forward facing hatch just here, that's got privacy screens, plenty of space. You know. I'm just touching the roof there. You do have enough space to move around and do your thing. And you've got an adjustable shower head there, hot and cold water just there. So that's that's not skimping. You can hang your towel up just here. So that's good to see. And then moving forward, this vanity area is very generous. And what they've cleverly done, you know, anticipating that there's gonna be four guests in this side of the hull, they've separated the storage area into four units. So everybody can have their travel toiletries bag and everybody can take one unit 
each, which just seems logical, good thinking. They're, you know, they're obviously thinking about the operation of the boat um, in terms of the design. So that's great to see. And then as we work our way around, we've got storage for all your toiletries in the cupboards just here and your loo roll just there. That's also access to um, you know, the, the, the toilet system itself. Um, we've got light switches just there. We've got our hot and cold, the deep same sink that we saw on the other side. And I'm not sure, yeah, I thought that was it. But look at that, the mirror slide. So that's great. So rather than taking up space when you got to get behind this, this is where you'd probably store more of your long-term toiletries or extra bits and pieces. You just slide it so you could still be using the vanity and uh, yeah, not, not blocking up space, the limited space that we do have. So that's great to see. Let's have a look at the toilet. So a lot of catamarans, um, when they're struggling to find space for people in the limited, um, limited area that they have to work with, um, they'll sacrifice on the loo. And I can clearly see in this guest cabin, the loo has not become a sacrifice. It's comfortable, it's spacious. We've got hanging, hanging areas for towels. Um, you can move around to do your business and you, the loo roll holder is just there rather than off to one some weird angle as it often can be. So yeah, very comfortable and it's gonna be good for you, know, you and your mates on their holiday. So here we are up on the foredeck of the XS. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff that you'd be familiar with seeing on many catamarans, but I'll, I'll walk you through it whilst we're here. First thing that you'll notice, uh, we do have the high-tech sails. It is on a self-tacking setup, and I'm gonna duck under it in a second because uh, we are starting to run out of breeze. Um, but we got, we got the anchor set up just here. So we have the anchor locker that goes through this track, and then the anchor is deployed just from here. Um, we do have a uh, setup or facility for a spinnaker on this boat because it is a bit of a sporty setup. And moving our way uh, around the boat, I've got opening hatches. I don't know if these are open. There we go. These are huge. So this is where you'd put your surfboards or your wakeboards or your foiling boards or whatever boards you're into these days because there's plenty of space. Um, this would even be good for smuggling people. So it's like another cabin down there. There's one on either side of the boat and it's a fantastic area for storing all that sort of gear. And whilst we're here, just come around and follow me. I'll show you what we're looking at. We got our water tank in just there. We got our waste out just there. And then we've got our large storage lockers, which is, this is where you can access the water tanks. You can put your fenders, extra sails, spinnakers, hoses, that sort of stuff are gonna be really good in these areas. And also if you've got the optional generator, it's gonna be mounted down here as well. This one has another water tank, more fender storage and the anchor chain locker as well in there. So that's very neatly laid out. That is something you see on a lot of catamarans, but it's just what you would expect to see. And it is there. Now, finally, if you need to get up forward and operate the mainsail, um, it's very easy because they put this ladder in here. So that is a good setup for allowing you to, there you go, to get up onto the roof, operate the main, basically, you know, zipping up the boom bag, that sort of thing. It's a lot easier done from up there. And this is how you do it. Or like us, if you just wanted to have a party day and have somewhere to launch into the water, maybe that's, that's what it's all for. So happy days. Well, thanks for joining us on that little sail offshore and down the Broadwater. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I guess, what can I say? If you are someone who wants to enjoy your sailing, who wants to take the family and friends and go on those adventures, or if you're just super social and want to take 15 mates out for a fantastic day and not be worried about the weather, then yeah, you should be checking out this catamaran. The XS, backed by the Beneteau Group, biggest boat builders in the world. You can't really go wrong with this. Imported by the guys at Flagstaff, who I know very well, possibly one of the best dealers in the industry. So I really think if you're gonna be considering a boat of this style, definitely put the XS12 on your list. My name's Dan, my name's Dan Jones, this is Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one. Nothing out there could ever stop me. 